Buhari is the president of the North, Ohaneze chieftain on COS's appointment. Chuks Ibegu, immediate past deputy national publicity secretary of Igwepex social political organization Ohaneze Indigo, has described President Muhammadu Buhari as a nepotistic and sectional leader. Ibegu insisted that Buhari's leadership has divided Nigeria more than a more than building a country that is united. He spoke to Daily Post while reacting to the appointment of Major General Farouk Yahya as the new Chief of Army Staff. Buhari appointed Yahya as the new COAS following the death of Ibrahim Atahiru alongside 10 other officers in Kaduna on Friday last week. Reacting to Yahya's appointment, the former Ohanizi spokesman said Buhari's leadership lacked balance. According to him, he says, for the past six years, Buhari has been running a sectional and nepotistic government. He appears to be the president of the northern Nigeria instead of the president of Nigeria. In a multi-ethnic and religious society like Nigeria, the constitution makes it clear that he has to balance everything for peace and unity to reign, but he has not done that. When Jonathan was here, he considered the peculiarity of Nigeria and he distributed offices and appointments accordingly. Jonathan established schools in all parts of the country, the Amadri system, to make the North have a sense of belonging. When Abbasanjo was here, he did his best for all parts of the country. Even Yaradua was not, is, was not as sectional as this. Buhari is so fixated, he does not care, and that is the irony. Buhari has the prerogative to appoint his chief of army staff when it comes to the appointment, but that right is subject to equity and fairness. Mr. President has done his duty of appointing the chief of army staff, but has not addressed the peculiarity and diversity of Nigeria. In a multi-ethnic society like this, he has to consider sensitivity, sensibility, and diversity. In summary, Mr. President has two years to stay, and he has not proven himself to be a nationalistic leader, but a sectional leader, an ethnic warlord, and a nepotistic leader. In the history of Nigeria, it will be on record that one General Buhari came, and instead of building a united nation, he was building a divided one. And then in history books, we will also have to analyze what did the people do to change it. That's it. That is it. I understand that, you know, this is what the situation is. But then what did the people do to change it? The fact that he won for the first term four years and we went through so much. But then he won and he won for a second term and there was not an uproar. Considering this country has a history of corruption and rigging figures. So it's not like as if, if there was an uprising, it would be out of the blue and you know, unjustified or unprovoked. You know, because again, if we ask them to give us the proof and identify where each and every vote comes from, then everything starts to crumble but we didn't do that so again i think for the first four years we, we that was a big shocker to us but then for the fact that buhari still had a second term and there was not a whole national uproar a whole uprising then there's an issue there you know and it's like the fact is i'm not saying nigerians are not doing anything we are but the, no the number of us that are actually doing something were not enough to make a big change. And you have to understand that only until recently, aka the NSAS protest, did we now actually understand that, you know what, the power actually lies in the people because as a country we have been conditioned to think and we've been convinced by some sort of way by the government that we do not have the power to change anything. Because... The most frustrating thing right now is to hear that, oh, well, you can only do something every four years because your constitutional rights allowed you to do bloody, bloody, blah, 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 blah. And it's very, it's very alarming because it's like this system of endurance, undue endurance for what? We have to then analyze, like, how can a country be in, in such a dire, like, situation, like, how like how and then in such the constitution does not even provide an avenue for the citizens to actually make change but we now have to wait every four years are you joking 
and you and we see how bad the country is and we have to wait every four years to 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 exercise our constitutional rights who, who, who do we even have constitutional rights do we even know what the constitution is do we even know our rights come on even this law that we are practicing do we even know the law do we respect the law because these politicians act like they're above the law and so again if that is the case then what do we the commoners have to do so again i think it's a problem here we know that he's not, we know that there are problems with the government and again it's not it's like there's no point hoping this man has proven so many times that he does not rate you he doesn't and i always keep reading this and i think that what it, for us to, for it to just encapsulate and you know just basically explain what is going on the current situation of you know what is going on in the country i'm going to read what chimamanda ngozi adeche actually spoke about or her comment on buhari at the time of the nsas protest which just sort of it just telegraphs how buhari sees nigerians and the kind of you know, relationship that he has um so she says i always read this it says the government of president muhammad buhari has long been ineffectual with a kind of willful indifference under his leadership insecurity has worsened there is a sense that Nigeria could very well burn to the ground while the president remains malevolently aloof. The president has often telegraphed a contemptuous self-righteousness as though engaging fully with Nigerians is beneath him. Twelve hours after soldiers shot peaceful protesters, Mr. Buhari still did not address the nation. That is it point blank period so again it's just like this just shows in simple terms the guy does not rate you he does not care and then it's like we now have to wait i'm like i just so, because again we need to understand our constitution i really know our rights and know that you know what we we actually have the power and the fact is that they don't value us because we in some ways, we have to take you know, take responsibility for that, or that, for the fact that we do not react in ways that we're meant to react, and we wait until it's too long, and waiting too long makes the fight harder. In which I thought the answers protest would teach us, because again, we started protesting. Of course, that was a dire situation. I mean, come on, we were literally begging to live, because at that point, it just got a bit too much. Where we're not actually dying, okay, and we're begging to live, and we're literally protesting and demanding as right as as you know, citizens and indigents of the country, like we need to live and then more deaths even occurred and obviously at that time we just saw the, the whole government crumble with how they tried to make up lies and then there was a the whole kind of worms with you know uh, the 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 um covid19 palliatives and all that a lot of things did happen but i think that at that moment we saw the nigerian government very much vulnerable in which you know what you can say it was effective because again we had international eyes but then again it's like to what extent can international eyes really help and you know make an impact but that's just the thing and i think that we need to go review the constitution and if if it is that the constitution only allows us to exercise our right every four years we must change it because <laughs> i'm not standing for that so put what you think about this in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe